Hey sketchy friends, it's Taria from urbansketchingworld.com here. Have you ever wondered how you can practice your watercolour skills but not like in a boring traditional way? I have five ideas for you here, five little gems just to get you more comfortable with those tricksy little paints. So number one is making a mixing chart. Before you do anything, please, please make a watercolour mixing chart. I know I bang on about this all the time, but I just can't emphasise enough like how it really stepped up my watercolour game. So please, please do go and check out this video that I have. I'm sorry, it is old and the audio is really not very good, but you will get the idea. You can just hop through it and you'll get the idea. Alternatively, I did make a newer video recently on the Daniel Smith's Essential set and I made a watercolour mixing chart with those colours. There was only six of those. In the other video, I did it with 14, which honestly, it took me hours. But in the more recent video, I did it with just six Daniel Smith paints. So you can see it on a smaller scale, bit of a clearer video. And then moving on even further from that, I show you how I mix the three different primaries together to make neutrals as well. So definitely worth checking out. So I know, okay, this one is a bit more of a traditional one. But again, I just cannot stress how much that helped me improve my watercolour mixing. So before I get on to the next exercises, do let me know in the comments what do you find hardest about watercolours? Like what is your main difficulty around using watercolour paint? I would love to know that. So do drop a comment in the section below. And also if you find these videos useful, I'm always sharing as much as I know about ink and watercolour sketching, travel sketching, urban sketching. If you find them useful, please do consider subscribing, liking, and hitting the bell to make sure that you know when my next videos are coming out. That would be absolutely fantastic. And it would really help me reach even more people and inspire more people to pick up a sketchbook and sketch the world around them. So yeah, that would be great. Okay, number two, this is an exercise that I saw in a Domestica course by Felix Scheinberger. It was called, let me see here, Artistic Watercolour Sketching, uh, Dare to Express Yourself. I'm a huge fan of Felix Scheinberger, as some of you guys know, and I was just so excited when he released this Domestica course. I think it was like last year or something, maybe, maybe even the year before, I'm not sure. So if you need a bit of a kick up the bum just to let go and express yourself on paper with ink and watercolour, then Felix Scheinberger is definitely a man. In his class, in his course, he shows an exercise where he just dribbles some, uh, it's actually coffee, which I think is sacrilege, but anyway, um, you can do this with watercolour paint. He just makes random blobs over his sketchbook spread and then he starts turning those blobs into something. So it works along the same lines as, you know, the classic staring up at the clouds and seeing shapes in the clouds, seeing shapes in the bushes, seeing Jesus on a piece of toast, all that kind of thing. <laughs> Pattern recognition. So it's that kind of thing. And it really just gets your creativity going. It gets you used to just not being so precious with your watercolor, just slopping it down on your page and starting to draw things around it. it. Doesn't have to be realistic, you can make monsters or whatever, but it just kind of gets you in that frame of mind of creativity, letting go and just playing. The third exercise that I want to talk about is one that I saw in a class by Laura McKendry. Now, Laura McKendry is an artist, illustrator and art educator. She's actually, she actually teaches at one of the top art schools in Europe. And she um, also has a Domestica class and the class is called Creative Watercolour Sketching for Beginners. So I was really intrigued to find out kind of what this course was about because I really think there is a differentiation between watercolour sketching and like playing with watercolour and then like traditional watercolour painting. And definitely quite a few years ago when I was trying to get my head around watercolour and stuff like that, I'd find so much information on traditional watercolour painting, stretching out your paper and taping it to a board and, you know, all that kind of stuff. And it's like, I'm not really interested in that. I want to like use watercolours in a more playful way and like a more experimental way and like, you know, also with line and sketching not that traditional way. So this kind of course that Laura McKendry has created is exactly what I 
needed like 10 years ago when I really started getting into watercolor sketching. So highly recommend it. Anyway, her exercise that she um, shows in this class, I mean, she shows loads of them, obviously, but the one I like as a next step is experimenting with wet in wet, but again, not in a traditional way. So as you can see on the screen, she makes strips across her sketchbook page and then she uses different sets of colors and uses them wet and wet to see how they interact with each other and what kind of effects they make. So in the course, she recommends starting off with um, harmonious colors. And so those are three or four colors that are sort of close to each other or next to each other on the color wheel. So try that with some strips or you can do it with circles or whatever shapes you want. Then she recommends after you've done that, try using discordant colors. So colors that really just don't look like they go together and see what happens with that as well. So that's, this is a really fun exercise. And again, just gets you into that zone of being creative and playing and not being scared of your watercolor paints. So the next exercise I wanna talk about is painting in monochrome. So this is where you're just using one color. So just pick a blue or a red or a green, whatever you wanna pick one color and then try painting a simple object with just that one color. So you would need to be able to get the light tones, a mid tone and a dark tone. And it really teaches you how to control the amount of water you use with the color you choose and what different opacities you can get with just one color. So again, in Laura McKendry's course, she demonstrates this by painting a paper plane. So she gets a piece of paper, makes a paper plane, puts it in front of her, and then paints it with just one color. And it's really lovely how she can get the light, the mid-tone and the dark tone to describe this simple object. So you can do the same, just pick a simple object that's maybe got some strong lighting on it so you can clearly see a light, a mid and a dark tone and then try it out for yourself. And then if you wanna take this one step further or actually quite a big jump further, you could look for a reference photo or something like that, a black and white photograph, or you can make your own photograph black and white, and then try and do a sketch of that scene with the just the one colour. So I actually did this with a, a beautiful photograph I found of London. It actually reminds me where I used to work in London, so that's why I love the photograph. And I did, did this whole sketch just in one colour. I think it was indigo. And it was it taught me a lot about how to represent lights, mid-tones and shadows just by using the one color. You don't have all the confusion of using different colors and mixing them together and that kind of thing. So this is a really great exercise. So start with simple singular objects and then work your way up to something where you can do the whole scene. That's a really great exercise. And then the uh, whilst I was coming up with this video, whilst I was thinking of um, the exercises and things, I happened to find this painting where I have painted silhouettes of people. This is when I was, I think I was doing my people sketching video, which you can check out on the channel and just representing silhouettes of people just in one color of uh, watercolor, but then also moving on to add in a second color as well. And then that ties back into the exercise before where you can put wet in wet and use two different colors. So that's another sort of side exercise you might want to have a go at. That was really fun. And then the final exercise that I want to mention, which I've been having so much fun with lately, and I've also been doing a series of videos over on Patreon about, is painting abstract watercolor backgrounds and then drawing on top of them. So actually what I've been doing is I painted three different backgrounds in my sketchbook. It's actually a sketchbook that I didn't think was going to take watercolor very well. So I was trying to test the sketchbook as well as test out this exercise. And I was also on top of that using these Ecoline concentrated liquid watercolors as well. So it was, or it was a lot of experimenting all at once, but that's fine. And so I painted three different backgrounds and then I was like, next time I go up and sketching, I am going to use one of these backgrounds. So the next time I went out, I ended up at um, the park with a few members of Urban Sketch of Johannesburg and we were sketching the copy or the hill. And I chose to use this abstract watercolor background because I thought it had some good colors in it for the scene that I wanted to do. And then I just drew on top of it and it was a complete experiment. And to be honest with you, I thought it was gonna be a bit of a disaster. 
and it surpassed all my expectations and actually is currently one of my favorite sketches that I've done in quite a long time. So that was a happy experiment. And then I took this other abstract watercolor background and I think it was a couple of weeks ago, I went out to our weekly pilgrimage to the, to the casino. If you're a Patreon, you know what I'm talking about. Anyway, and I sketched some of the interior of the casino on top of this yellow background. And that also came out quite well. So I've still got this blue one that I've painted and I haven't used yet, but I will do soon. But this is a really great exercise. And it's something that comes from, I mean, it's something that I've been playing with in various forms over the last couple of years. But recently it was really solidified in my mind to give it a go by watching a course by Jenny Adams, a German urban sketcher. And she's got a course called Urban Sketching in Mixed Media. So if you're interested in that, all of the links to the classes and courses that I'm talking about are all in the video description. So you can check them out there. So if you're interested in urban sketching in mixed media and using different techniques, then this is a really great course. It's definitely great if you're kind of through that maybe beginner stage and you want to push out or experiment a bit further. This is a great course. So... I highly recommend that. What I would say is perhaps don't do what I did and paint your watercolour backgrounds in such bright colours because then it kind of becomes a bit difficult to draw and paint on top of that. Um, so I would say start with subtler, uh, fainter colours as your background and then build up from there. But again, really, really fun exercise to have a go at. So I hope that's given you a bit of inspiration, guys, of what to do and how to play with your watercolours, a bit of direction with what to try in your sketchbook next. And if you want even more ideas of how to fill up your watercolor sketchbook, then do check out this video, this video <laughs> that um, I released quite some time ago, but it's 21 ideas for your watercolor sketchbook. So I think you'll find lots of gems in there. And if you want to follow along with me weekly as we experiment over on Patreon, then that's also something you can have a look at. Link is in the description below. And again, as I said, all of the links to the courses and whatnot that I've mentioned are in the video description. So thanks very much for watching this video and I will see you in the next one.